This is a brief example of a case-based bid management process. This is often referred to as an unstructured process as the flow is not really defined up front and the next step will emerge as you complete the current one. It uses XM Pro's unique event-based architecture and before we look at a process example, let's have a quick look at what the process model behind it looks like. So this is the XM Pro design environment and, and it's used by business champions and process analysts to create either workflows or event-based processes. And in this example, we will focus on the bid management process, which is an event-based or case-based uh, process. So if I just double click on the market and sell products and services, I will look at opportunity management. As you can see, there's versioning inside this. But what is what is um, evident from this model is that uh, these are independent events that can occur, and that is the event-based architecture. If I wanted to do a workflow, I could draw arrows between this, and that will enforce a workflow. But from a case base or unstructured point of view, um, a typical bid process tends to, the next step will emerge as you do the current one. So what we don't want to do is enforce what the flows are. We will use business rules to set up uh, guardrails and we'll touch on that as we step through the example. So let's go back to the example itself. This is the XM Pro um, end user front end. So this is one of them. Uh, I'm just going to log in as Keith. In here, uh, this is the web based front end. There's also Outlook, Salesforce, and um, SharePoint, and also mobile. So, any process that you see here is automatically rendered. You don't have to do anything else to get it to render as a mobile process as a mobile process or mobile user interface. What you'll see from this and what makes case-based processes unique is that those are all those independent tasks. So these are some of them. So some of the ones that you see here, we've actually allocated to do um, to, to, uh, to this activity and I can choose each one of these. They are independent and they're not they are not workflowed to this one at the back. Later on, towards the end of the example, I will show you how I dynamically add another activity to this. So let's look at this example. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to read some data from an external data uh, source and in this instance I'm using Salesforce so it uses the XM Pro Connect, the, the XM Pro Connector uh, interrogator and it goes off and brings information back from the cloud-based um, Salesforce in this example. So what it'll do, it'll read some information off there and bring back some of the CRM information. Now the same way that we read we can write back. From this case point of view, um, the one thing with with unstructured processes as you can see here is that they're still not uncontrolled. It's really important to understand that unstructured doesn't mean uncontrolled. From a business rules point of view we can still put up guardrails to make sure that certain things happen um, with inside the compliance requirements of our business. So in this example uh, we will look if it's a new customer and the uh, and that's a new target segment and it's a new technology and the opportunity value exceeds a certain number there's a, a business rule that look at any combination of this um, and in this instance say this is a million dollar deal or opportunity what will happen you'll see at the moment it's optional to send it to a bid review board as soon as i put the value in there it will then make it compulsory. So it doesn't, once again, it doesn't dictate when the bid review board will happen, but what it does require is that there's a bid review board that's going to um, look at this because it is a new technology, it is quite a significant deal, and it's a new customer that we haven't dealt with before. So as you can see, you can still use business rules to set up uh, the guardrails for compliance to work with in this. Some of the other things that we can do at this point in time is um, at attach documentation, uh, we can set up questions and all of this we can once again update back to Salesforce. In this example, um, if you're using another CRM system, uh, it would then write it back to the other CRM system. XM Connect is covered in a different uh, video in terms of how we handle integration and how we set up business entities for that. Uh, one last item I'd like to cover on this before we step on to the next step in this in this example is process goals. So because because I have all these 
options down here we need to provide people with some decision support to be able to make the right decision around what do I want to do next so some of the things if there were certain other conditions here we would uh, remove some of the of these buttons dynamically and only for example leave legal or credit check um, but in this instance uh, we can once again bring in information from the financial system we can bring in information from the CRM system and look at uh, some of and and put that on the dashboard uh, for business users to in, to help them with better decision support for this so in this instance uh, Keith uh, read something in the paper or we know something about this organization and what he'd like to do is to send it off for a credit check at this point in time uh, if it was a different scenario or different requirements, he may, have, he may have chosen to send it off to a margin approval. So as you can see, these are dynamic. So in this instance, the example will be that he, he sends it for a credit check. I'm just going to log in as a as uh, two or three steps down the process. I'm going to log in as Tim. And I'm just going to, do to go to his to-do list and in that to-do list under market and sell product and services. Now there's notification and escalation, so it'll automatically send a notification to him via email or SMS. Um, and if there's no response, it, the normal escalation processes will happen. But in this instance, um, let's look at that one that came through from, um, from Keith that was originated uh, of, uh, from Keith. So if we look at the history just to see how it came to us, so it was initially done by Keith as you can see it was a form base that he completed it then we, um, and he sent it on for a credit check. Uh, it came to John and I, uh, this icon here depicts that John actually uh, wanted to know some more information and he entered into a discussion. So he clicked on the discussion there and if we quickly look at the discussion history you can see that there's some unstructured discussions happening inside this. So um, John went back to Keith and said, is this the same opportunity as we looked at last month? Keith, yes, but it was re reissued as a new project and then John, sure, will work on this. So you can see the collaboration trail is contained within the side, the case trail or the process trail. So this is a, a live order trail of the information and it's not only the forms based information that is captured in here but also the unstructured conversations that happened at there. You'll also see there's an un, uh, ad hoc task or an unstructured task um, that uh, um, Tim initiated. Now the, ex the example of that would be that looking at this there's certain information and I may realize that um, the CRM system is not updated with all the right information for Express Logistics. So I may just send a ad hoc task to someone and I can send a task to, so I can just say, please review, and um, I'm not going to go through the whole example here, but I can say, please review um, um, CRM info for this client, uh, and I can. I can upload uh, attachments, uh, screen samples. I can send it on to someone and I can say it needs to go to TED to do something, due dates. The important thing is if I link it to this task, it will then appear inside this order trail as you saw the example. If I don't link it, then it just puts a new task on someone's to-do list and it's not linked into the history as we have in this example over here where you can see it's actually currently linked into. So that gives you the ability to handle events that is not even defined on here but that do require action, immediate action from someone to do. So looking at the rest of this um, screen you can see we've embedded some more analytics I inside that. Um, looking at documents that were associated, now this one just has one example, but as you step through the process and at any, t at any event, at any step in the process by any, diff by any specific user, you can, you can see all the um, documents that were associated to this process. So it creates a single view from a case file perspective. You can even preview documents in here, so I can look at that document and it'll download it from wherever the repository. In this example, um, uh, it's a SharePoint, uh, or it can be um, in an XMPro file based solution, or um, it can be SharePoint or any one of the document management systems uh, out there. 
it's just taking a few seconds to load off the server uh, in the cloud so there you can see there's the preview of the document itself once again the process goals you can add additional so in the first step it didn't have the actual versus budget it just showed the budget and now it shows actual to this manager because manager's got a, a slightly different view on things um, and the last thing I'd like to cover on here is the best next action now this is a simple best next action um, but this is really trying to help them with decision support once again there's a number of things that need to that they have options to choose from and in this instance we will look at the previous history and the similar circumstances and based on that it advises that a legal review be done this, these best next actions there there's actually a separate video on this um, with a number of different examples um, using external web services using policy guides all sorts of things like that to show you how um, or to advise the, what the best next action is. Key thing for these kinds of processes you, is that you want to provide decision support uh, based on these. So that is really just um, an example of how you would step through a, 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 um, a case-based or unstructured process where the events in the back end are not workflowed into it and you can handle a, a large number of potential events on a um, as the process emerges or as it steps through the process. I would just like to make one change and show you an example of the dynamic capability of, and I'm just going to go back as Keith, as you'll recall on his first screen, i just get the password right, as you'll recall on the first screen Keith had five different options on here. If I go back to the design environment in the back end and um, looking at the properties of that, what I can do is under dynamic allocation. If I, for example, want to be able to add a finance review in there, or um, and what I'll do is I'll just call this finance review. I save that and when I go back to the front end if I reset this screen you will see that finance review now appear as an option I didn't have to do any manual wiring in or I didn't have to draw any flow diagrams I didn't have to do anything to get um, that option onto the screen so that's really how easy it is to add new activities or events on the fly. Thank you for watching this video and uh, please come back to watch some of the others showing some of the other functionality inside XM Pro. Thank you for your time.